Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. Today's episode, now that I've got some clownfish in my tank, we're gonna go UV sizing and shopping. All right, thanks everyone for joining me on another episode of uh, what is becoming a, a very extensive process on the build of my dream reef tank. Now, if you're following the channel, you may have noticed in one of the recent episodes, we introduced these two little gorgeous clownfish here from Coastal Clownfish up in New South Wales. And I mentioned in that video the, um, something a little bit controversial and that is that I do not do fish quarantine with any of my uh, tanks. Now, there's a few reasons for that. Firstly, I tend to only buy fish that aren't going to rock the boat that much. I'm not the sort of person that adds a uh, powder blue, an Achilles, um, uh, white cheeks, some of these other fish that are very, very white spot prone. Secondly, I only buy fish that are very healthy. They're fat, they're eating, although these guys are taking a little, little bit less food than I'd like at the moment, but they are eating, so that's good. And lastly, I run UVs on my systems. Now on my previous display tank, I ran a, I um, ah, forgot what the name of them are now, damn. Now on my previous tank, I ran a DeBarry UV system, which at the time was all the rage. And um, whilst I still have that system, it looked a little bit small, plus it's a bit tired, it's a bit old, it's a bit used. I wanted to see what the latest and greatest of UV systems was out there. And um, it doesn't take a lot of looking around to come across a brand such as Pentair. I mean, you've got guys like uh, Reef Nerd, Marcus has got a brand new Pentair for his Dream Reef build. You got guys like David Mai on his Dream Reef build is running a big Pentair. You got guys like uh, uh, BRS, Ryan from BRS is running big Pentairs on his Dream Reef tank build. So it made me look into the company and after having a quick chat with my uh, local fish shop to see what sort of rec size or unit or, or size they recommend, they straight up went, go straight to Fresh by Design and check out all of their information on Pentair UVs. So I figured if I'm gonna go through the uh, research and size a unit for my system, I may as well grab the camera and take you guys along for the ride so we can work it out together. You can let me know whether you think I'm on the right path or not. I'll do this video on the uh, sizing and buying of the unit. Then when the unit gets here, we'll do another one of fitting it up and testing the flow. So um, I'm gonna jump on my computer. I'll get the uh, screen recording happening there and uh, let's walk through the process. All right, here we are and uh, welcome to my MacBook. We've just jumped onto the uh, Fresh by Design website at freshbydesign.com.au and instantly what I like about this site is that uh, we're not talking uh, small home aquarium gear. We're talking huge aquaculture stuff, um, aquaculture, public aquariums, you name it. These guys are not dealing with toys. They've got some serious products. We can see pictures of skimmers and uh, drum filters and some uh, CAD design stuff like that full on. Now, one other thing that did catch my eye down here was uh, something that's often asked about in the uh, aquarium trade, and that is zip payment. People talking after pay, zip payment, uh, you name it. Uh, when you're purchasing somewhat expensive items, it can be handy if you can spread that cost out. So saying zip pay there is uh, pretty handy. And there's also uh, a position available in uh, New Zealand. So any uh, Parker's Reef followers in New Zealand looking to work in the trade, possibly have a look into uh, that there. But uh, anyway, we're here to have a look at the uh, products. So let's jump into that area there. And uh, we've got a bit of a range of products here. You can see um, some stuff that we're probably not gonna use, like some of these like drum filters, probably not gonna do fish counters. I mean, thankfully <laughs> in the home aquarium, you can count uh, fish yourself, but uh, these drones look interesting. I can't imagine what size tank you would need to send a drone down in it, but uh, it does look like something that could be a bit of fun and um, significantly cheaper than I would expect it to be, actually. I'd expect something like this to be um, considerably more expensive. But uh, anyway, I'm not going to get lured into the drones because that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to find a, a UV. Now, actually, I do want to have a quick look at these skimmers because holy moly, RK2 protein skimmers some of these units you could actually get into a home aquarium uh, for a serious home aquarium and to see that they carry those is pretty cool. We've also got heating and cooling which is um, handy. We've got a uh, solid supply of Shago heaters here, the titanium heaters. I might 
pick some of them up for my order as well. And they've also got some of the uh, larger, um, or you've got chillers, but they've also got some of the larger uh, pool style chillers and also uh, titanium coils for uh, heaters, which you can do up to four kilowatts. Hectic. So that's good to know. What else have we got in here? We've got some plumbing and fittings. We've obviously got the UV stuff we're talking about. The water quality and monitoring could be of interest, but uh, let's jump into UVs and have a look here. You can see we've got a range of uh, spare parts for different brands. This one looks hardcore, but probably a bit beyond uh, what I need. We've got uh, some Pentair units here, but they look like full commercial units. Here's the Pentair I'm looking for. This is the one that I find uh, my friends in the uh, Dream Reef Tank building game are uh, opting for. And you can see not only do we have the full uh, UV there, you can pick up a spare power supply, you can pick up pair, spare lamps, you can pick up spare leaves. So it's something that I'm always very mindful of, of when you're picking something up that's an expensive purchase, because let's face it, um, these UVs are expensive and they do have components that uh, need to be replaced. The ballast you probably, or the power supply, you're probably gonna get a fair while out of, but uh, the bulbs you really, you need to be changing every 12 months um, at most frequent and 18 months at uh, maximum stretch. And to be honest, um, you can clean the quartz sleeves, but uh, let's just have a look and see what they cost. They range between 45 bucks and 180 bucks for a mid-sized unit, we're talking 60 bucks. To be honest, uh, I don't know, I'd probably be looking to change the sleeve out every um, second bulb or so just to make life a little bit easier. But um, let's have a look at the bulb costs while we're here. 80 to 300. We'll pick something in the middle, 125. Okay, so that's reasonable for a bulb. It's good to know what we're gonna be out for for running costs. But uh, let's jump on in and have a look at the UVs themselves. Now, we're ranging between 450 and five and a half grand. I'm assuming the five and a half grand is a gigantic unit at, um, yeah, it's one of the full style commercial units. I'm guessing we're gonna be somewhere in the middle here, but uh, what I need to do is work out what sort of uh, flow I need. And you can see some of the info here. We've got um, 170 liters per minute, which is so many liters per hour, which is so many millijoules per centimeter squared at 90% UVT. Okay, I'm gonna to need to work out uh, what sort of uh, size unit I need. I'm talking around a 1500 litre tank. We've got a, a general guide here. Now, it says here I could run the 50 watt unit because we've got that general aquarium volume that's between 800 and 1500 litres or we could go up to the 80 watt unit which is 1500 to 2200 litres and uh, we've got uh, some flow rates recommended for tanks that size. If you want to do the standard dose, which is going to be sort of targeted at uh, your algae sort of uh, eradication, not eradication, but limitation, and then uh, your white spot uh, management dose. So you can see the smaller units they don't recommend for a uh, white spot. And then the larger units uh, from the sort of third smallest upwards, I guess 40 watts upwards, uh, they've got a different liters per minute, which you can see we're talking drastically less, a bit over a ten tenth of the flow um, for managing white spot as we are managing algae. So I'm gonna to need to work out what size unit I need. Do I need to go the 50 or the 80? We've also got a decent difference in size there. So I need to factor in where I'm gonna fit this unit. Thankfully for me, I'm gonna pop this out in the uh, outdoor box with uh, the chiller. So I could realistically probably go almost any, except for maybe this uh, 300 watt unit. I could realistically probably go any of the others. Um, but what I will do is I might grab some of these figures here and pop them in my own spreadsheet just so I can uh, have a play around with some of these values and see where my tank's going to fit in with it. We've got some uh, uh, the BRS review or recommendation. Looks like a video here on uh, how to replace the sleeve and the shield, which is good. Uh, and let's have a look some of these things up here. We've got the brochure. We've got the, the dose chart, the manual. Okay. All right, let's jump on over into my spreadsheet and uh, give some things a bit of a play around there. All right, so all I've really done is grabbed uh, the information that was on the uh, website here, which gave some good information about uh, the flow you need to achieve uh, the 30 millijams, millijoules a centimeter squared, basically the algae dose, and then the uh, white spot dose, which is nine and a third times stronger. Therefore, it's a fair bit slower. As you can see, we start talking at 10 liters per minute as opposed to 97 liters per minute. Now, the big question I had is, do I go the, 80, uh, the 50 watt unit, which is good for up to 1500 liters, or do I go the 80 watt unit, which is from 1500 upwards? 
Now I'm leaning towards the 80 watt unit because uh, I do believe that uh, bigger is better with UV and um, it just gives me a little bit more flexibility with flow rates. But uh, I wanted to put these, uh, these figures into a spreadsheet and work out exactly the one I needed. Now, the team at uh, Fresh by Design do recommend, particularly for a white spot application, that you want to turn your tank volume over Every one to uh, every one to two hours, you want to put the entire volume of your water in your tank through the UV sterilizer. Now, obviously, still at the speed to achieve the white spot dose. There's no use just pumping the water through there really quickly and saying, good, it's all been sterilized because you need to keep this liters per minute flow rate to give the contact time and the strength of dose required to kill the UV uh, parasite. So... Again, I wanted to work out whether the smaller unit, which was good to 1500 liters, or the bigger unit from 1500 up was gonna work. So I grabbed those values and I plugged them into a spreadsheet. And this is what I come up with. So we've got the 18, 25, 40, 50, the 80 watt I'm looking at, the 120 watt I'm looking at, I should also highlight this one, uh, the 150, the 240, the 300, and so on and so on. So the white spot flow, I've changed it from liters per minute to liters per hour just because that works best for me. All I did is multiply it by 60. So I can see how many liters per hour. It makes more sense to me. So I've just bumped those figures up by 60 to give the liters per hour. And then I've just for curiosity's sake, I've put the tank suitability value in here. And then I've worked out what uh, how many hours it would take to turn over 1500 liters of water through those uh, reactor sizes based on the liters per minute recommendation. Now, you can see the three I've highlighted here, which are the three in the middle. This shows the number of hours it takes to turn over. So if I went the 300 watt unit, I'd be doing it uh, basically every third of an hour and we'd start slowing things down. If I went a 40 watt unit, it would take three and a third hours, basically three hours, 20 minutes to turn my volume over, which is gonna be too slow. If I go the 50 watt unit, it's gonna take every two and a half hours, which interestingly, they, it says the 50 watt unit is good for 1500 liters. I would suggest that, that you're probably stretching things a little bit if you're using it for the white spot control. The team say to aim for every one to two times an hour to turn your volume through the reactor at that uh, flow rate. So at two and a half times, we're stretching things a little bit there. The 80 watt unit is one less than 1.4, 1 1 so we're 1.389 uh, hours to turn the volume over, which is quite good. And then if we bump up to the 120 watt unit, it's actually good. It'll turn the volume over every hour, which is uh, right on their maximum strength. Now, I'm not too concerned. Like I said, I'm not looking to put uh, super white spot prone fish in my tank. I just want to stop outbreaks from occurring. So rather than going the one time strength, if you were looking to keep a school of Achilles, a bunch of powder tanks, this is probably the unit I'd recommend for a 1500 liter tank. If like me, you're just looking to stop outbreaks from getting out of hand. This is the unit I'm going to go for. Now, interestingly, there's not a huge price difference between the 50, 80, and 120. And you can see there's a huge uh, difference in the amount of strength they give. So, I mean, obviously, this one's using a fair bit more power than this one. But uh, your initial outlay is not that different. For me, the 80-watt unit is right in the sweet spot. In fact, that... On its recommended flow rate for white spot, it's going to process the entire tank volume every 1.389 hours, which gives me a little bit of flexibility if I just need to speed it up a little or slow it down a little bit for those recommended flow rates. I know that I'm still going to be addressing the white spot parasite in that flow. So I'm going to jump back on over to the site and uh, purchase that 80 watt unit. All right, so now that I know that the 80 watt unit is the one for me, let's go ahead and purchase this unit. I'm going to uh, pick that from the menu here. 80 watts, perfect. 1200 minus GST, or excluding GST, I should say, not minus. You don't get a discount. <laughs> GST, all right, that's been added to my cart. Let's head up here. Let's uh, hit the old checkout button. All right. It's going to blur my... Uh, address details out, but you can see across here, we've got uh, some freight options here. On a pretty large package, we've got uh, a $39 freight option or an $85 freight option. I'm gonna go the $39 option, and then I'm gonna scroll down and pop my credit card details in. You can also see here, we've got the zip payment option. If I tick that, what does it do? 
Okay, it'll happen when you go to the next uh, part of the site, but um, I'm gonna go the uh, credit card option. I'm gonna put my details in now and uh, get this unit on the way. I'm quite pleased with the $39 freight option. These guys are based in Sydney, I believe. Let's have a look. Yeah, O2's in New South Wales. So from New South Wales to Victoria, 39 bucks for a huge box like this. Happy days. All right, guys, there you have it. That was my thought process for the UV. Let me know what you think about it below. I've only ever had a DeBarry secondhand UV before. This is my first ever brand new UV and it's my first ever uh, what I'd consider a serious unit. I'm really uh, liking the specs on this thing. I like the uh, long life lamp on it. I like the uh, dedicated ballast, which is, uh, but it's been designed to provide that long life. I really like the, uh, the, the viewing inspection thing so you can see the UV operational. You get that cool glow coming out the end of it. It's got uh, some drain ports and things just so you can flush that air out of the system. But we'll go, all over, we'll go over all of those details when the unit arrives. I've placed the order now, so I anticipate it's probably gonna be a couple days. As soon as I get that UV here, I'll uh, do an unboxing. We'll set it up. I'll get the flow happening on this tank. We'll measure the flow to make sure it's dialed in perfectly. And um, I'll let, we'll see how it operates from there. I'm sure it's gonna help keep the uh, white spot uh, nasties at bay. Like I said, I'm not expecting this tank to be completely eradicated of white spot. That's not the aim at all. I just wanna stop outbreaks from happening and I wanna get it on there before the outbreak gets hold. So whilst my little uh, clownfish, which are not really venturing out of their corner all that much at the moment, very soon and probably shortly after Christmas, the rest of the fish list will start happening and there will be a couple of fish in there. There could just be a little bit more white sp spot prone than the clownfish. So I wanna get this UV on there well before Christmas. I wanna make sure I iron out any bugs, get the flow dialed in and um, we'll go from there. That's probably all I got time for in this video. I was probably a bit of a strange one just watching me uh, work through numbers in my head and uh, purchase something online. But I've seen a lot of questions on the forums and uh, Facebook groups about people working out what size UV to go for. That was my thought process. Personally, I was going for white spot control. I don't want to say eradication control. So that I used the information provided by the uh, team at Fresh by Design and also the manufacturer to work out uh, the dose rate, their flow rate, and then matched that to my tank size to make sure I was right in that sweet spot of one to two times per hour. Whoops, another technical difficulty. Sorry guys, I can totally appreciate now why there is so much confusion around this topic. There's been a couple times now where the messages got garbled up from my brain to my mouth, and I've said that you need to turn the entire volume over one to two times per hour, when in fact, you need to turn it over one times within one to two hours. So there's a fairly drastic difference there. Now, the best thing you can do is just take your time, write it down if you're old school or pop it in a spreadsheet if you're a little bit more new school, check out the manufacturer's recommended flow rates, whether you're looking at algae or white spot control, Personally, I'm looking to control white spots, so I grabbed the liters per minute, converted that into liters per hour, had a look at the different size units at that recommended flow rate to see which unit is gonna process my entire tank volume within one to two hours. That's as simple as it needs to be. There's so much confusion around this topic. I don't know why <laughs> it's not that hard, but I've proven myself that it can be quite uh, confusing when you start talking turnover rates and liters per hour, liters per minute, uh, millijoules, centimeters squared, the energy going in, it, it quickly gets out of hand. Follow the recommended flow rates, work out what's gonna be processing your tank volume every one to two hours for white spot control, then you're good to go. Anyway, back to our video. That's where I've ended up. Let me know what you guys think. If you've enjoyed the video, do give it a thumbs up. It goes a long way to ensuring that this video gets recommended to other reefers. If you're not yet, please consider subscribing. There's a little button down there in that corner. Just hit that. Cost you no money at all. Take two seconds of your time. And I'd be very, very grateful if you could subscribe. And lastly, if you've got any feedback, questions, comment, whatever it is, pop it in the comment section down below. I do personally reply to each and every question or comment that gets put on there. So uh, if you want to reach out to me, that's the best way to do it, guys. But uh, other than that, I'll wrap things up there. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, guys, stay safe, keep reefing.